Greetings, mathematicians of all ages. Today, we are going to use models to multiply and divide decimals. Later in the chapter, we're actually going to multiply and divide decimals. Once again, it'd be nice to give you that uh, kind of mental picture of what's going on as we're doing that later. Okay. Now, it does get a little messy when we're trying to, mo uh, trying to model these things that normally you don't see modeled. Uh, and a good example of that is it's pretty easy I think to model addition of decimals or fractions you could say so if I have you know a half cupcake clearly that's a cupcake and another half of a cupcake and I'd add those up a half and a half right will give me a whole cupcake a delicious cupcake okay and then when we're multiplying you could even say not necessarily decimals but if I have um, you know, bags of, we'll stick with cupcakes, bags of cupcakes, and in each bag I have four cupcakes. Then if I have three of those bags, you know, each with four cupcakes, then I have four cupcakes in each bag times three bags, which is going to give me 12 cupcakes, right? So the modeling there, not, not too crazy, but once we have to start showing that with uh, decimals it does get a little bit tricky so let's jump right in here all right so the first one I want to do is uh, 0 0.6 or 6 tenths times 0 0.3 or 3 tenths so 6 tenths times 3 tenths and the way we do that is with you can see a 10 by 10 square and what we're gonna do is I actually want to fill in um, 6 tenths on the vertical and 3 tenths on the horizontal I'll show you what I mean so um, remember when I have a box a 10 by 10 box each row or each column is 10 of those boxes 10 hundredths which would be the same as a tenth so I need to fill in um, six of those tenths right so we have the six tenths we're gonna have that going up and down okay so I'll just uh, take a second to fill these in you get the idea you can fill in more thoroughly than me if you want but I fill in six of those columns and then on the horizontal I actually want to fill in three tenths and I'm gonna do that side to side so again rows uh, if I do ten in a row that's gonna be a tenth okay so I did six tenths and three tenths and when you're modeling decimals, what you do is whatever the overlap is of those two, that's actually your answer. So you can see here, the overlap is right here, right? And that's my overlap. I can fill it in more if I want. But if I count up those boxes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way up to 18. And since this is a box of 100, my final answer is actually going to be 18 hundredths so I have 0.6 times 0.3 equals 18 hundredths let's do another decimal times a decimal so in this case we're gonna do 0.5 or 5 tenths times 0.2 or 2 tenths and again it doesn't matter which you choose on the horizontal or the vertical um, as long as you do one on one and one on the other okay so this time I'll do the bigger one uh, with my horizontal rows so that's going to be my 0.5 and then I'm going to do the smaller one the 2 tenths with my vertical rows okay so then this is going to be 2 tenths let me change how dark my marker is here so now I'm going to fill in um, 5 tenths across you know again fill in more if you want and then I can fill in 2 tenths up and down and I look at the overlap and I have 10 hundredths 10 boxes, right? 10 hundredths, which is the same as 1 tenth. So overall, the answer would be 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 equals 0.1. Pretty interesting. Multiplication, we usually think when we multiply things, it, our answer gets bigger. In this case, um, 5 tenths, which is half, and 2 tenths, which is a fifth, actually turns out being a tenth, which is smaller than both. We can talk more about that later if you want. All right, now let's do a whole number times a decimal. 
All right, so when we're doing a whole number times a decimal, in essence what's happening is for the whole number, you'll actually want to have entire boxes to represent the whole. And if you want to spend the time, you know, I'd end up filling in all of these up and down. I'll say my uh, my two is on the vertical, you know, and so I'm filling all these in and up and down, um, all of the boxes would be filled in because I fill in 20 tenths, which is my two there, okay? And then on the horizontal, so if I can keep doing it the same way I've been doing it, my two is actually gonna be on the vertical, so this is my two. And then on the horizontal, I wanna do uh, three, excuse me, three tenths. And I'm gonna fill that in again horizontally. And so, um, and you fill it in all the way across all the way across and you can see of my overlap once I add all those up or do some multiplication to figure that out I have um, 30 in this box 30 in this box which would be 60 hundredths which I can write as 0 0.60 as 60 hundredths um, also 6 tenths right the last kind you might see is a decimal that includes a whole number so let's take a look at one of those all right, so in the last one, when I had the whole number two, I, I did that on the vertical and I filled it all in. Um, in this case, I'm once again gonna do my bigger number on the vertical, but instead of filling in all of the two boxes, I only have to fill in one and a half of those boxes, right? So let's do that first. Um, you know, if I fill them on the vertical, it would fill in all these up and down, you get the idea? Because I wanna get one and a half there, 1.5 there. And on the horizontal, I'm gonna do um, my 0.4 or 4 tenths. And I'll fill that in across. And again, all the way across, just like I did with the um, 3 tenths in the last example, all right? Now when I look at my overlap, I can see um, 40 hundredths that overlap there. And over here, it actually only overlaps up to here, up to here, which is another 20. So I have 40 hundredths and 20 hundredths, which gives me 60 hundredths or 6 tenths. Turns out to be the same answer as last time. Okay, so with multiplying decimals, if I'm modeling them, my goal is to fill uh, vertical for one of the decimals, horizontal for the other decimal, and whatever the overlap is, that's my answer. All right, time to start dividing decimals. They start very similarly to the way that multiplying decimal starts, and that's with a 10 by 10 box. So now that we got our box, let's take a look at one. Um, a perfectly decent division problem involving decimals would be something like uh, 0.4 or 0.40 same thing, um, divided by 0 0.08, and we're looking for what that equals, okay? Now, the way we start these is, whatever the first number is, that's how much I fill in. So I'm gonna fill in 4 tenths of this box, and uh, you can do it horizontal or vertical in division, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so I fill that in, and then the second number, this one, is actually, how big I want each group to be. So when you're doing a, a regular division problem and you're modeling that, you know, if I have uh, six apples and I want to divide six by two, I can put them in groups of two and then I get that six divided by two is three because I have three groups. It's pretty similar in this. It's very similar in this. So um, this number is how big each group is. So I want each group to be 800. So I have a group here I have a group here, a group here, and so on. And you can see that my four tenths divided into groups of eight hundredths gives me five groups. So actually the answer to this problem is five. Okay, now so let's just uh, put one down here. Let's do 0 0.35 uh, divided by 0 0.05 
will give me seven. And I think the best way to do this is um, just write this down with me. So our first number is how much is filled in. The second number is the size of the group. And the last number is always going to be the number of groups that you end up having. So if you look up top here, this is how much we filled in. This is how big our groups were. This is how many groups we ended up with. Okay, so let's look at another one here. All right, so here we have 36 hundredths divided by four hundredths. So the first thing we have to do is, if you look back at our other example here, um, the first number is how much you fill in. Second number is the size of the group. The thing we're trying to find out is how many groups, right? So the first thing we gotta do is fill in 36 hundredths of this. I already did 30, and I only need six more here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? And now I need my group size to be four hundredths. So I'll just start by going this way. Here's a group, here's a group, group, and so on. And now this way, I'll turn these vertical probably. And if you count those groups, there's actually nine groups, right? So we get nine groups there. Now the only other thing that you're gonna have to do on this assignment is they give you uh, kind of what it looks like, what the whole problem looks like, and then you have to figure out the missing part. So why don't we do one of those? All right, so here's an example. And you can see uh, so much is filled in, the groups are a certain size, and there are so many groups. I think probably one of the first easiest things to see is how many groups there are. If I count them up, it's just each column, so there's six groups there, right? Now if I look at how much is filled in, 60 of the little boxes out of the total big 100 boxes, so that's 60 hundredths, right, which is the same as 6 tenths I could put. And then that the second blank is how big the size of each group is, right? And uh, since I have a whole column, that's 10 hundredths or 1 tenth, right? All right, so that's how we model the multiplication of decimals, the division of decimals, and later in the chapter we'll get into the actual math how you calculate those. All right, see you next time.